Has there ever been a game that you've heard is really good, so you went into it completely blind, and then loved it right from the start? Well, for me, Outer Wilds was not that game. Now, hold on before you go, uh? hear me out. Back in 2022, I heard the hype around Outer Wilds and thought, how could I play this game before? But then I tried it for about two hours, and my reaction was... I don't get it. Though I did like the concept and visual style, I just found it boring. But I usually love games that allow me to explore. Maybe it had to do with the lack of enemies, or the fact that in order to get the story, you had to read it. To me, the most exciting part was trying to park my spaceship in an area that would prevent it from floating away. More importantly, I couldn't find the fun. But it did feel like I was missing something, more than actually finishing the game. So a little over a year later, I decided to give it another try. So into the game I went to up up up. Before I get into that, I think it's important to understand why I came to this decision. Throughout my years as an epic gamer, I've played a wide variety of games. Titles like Borderlands, Fallout New Vegas, and Stardew Valley, just to name a few. These are all very popular and well-respected games within their genres. And I didn't like any of them. Upon my first playthroughs, Borderlands confused me with its level scaling, New Vegas looked and felt very outdated, and Stardew Valley was, well... None of these games immediately hooked me within the first few hours, so I had no incentive to keep playing. That was until years later, when I was really bored and decided to give each of them another chance, just for funsies. And after playing them again, something strange happened. The things that made me dislike the games back then didn't bother me anymore. Borderlands made me appreciate its fun world and weapon variety, New Vegas hooked me in with its bleak atmosphere and banger radio tunes, and Stardew Valley is now one of my favorite games ever. It was then I realized, sometimes you just need to be in the right headspace. But also, there's a lot of things you might be willing to give a second chance when you let enough time pass, which is fitting considering the game in question has time at the center of it all. With all that in mind, it's rewind time. Ah. Wake up. For those who haven't played Outer Wilds, you are an alien. And no, not this type of alien. You're from an Earth-like planet called Timber Hearth. Very creative. The inhabitants called Hearthians I'm stuck in a tree! created the Outer Wilds Ventures to go on expeditions to find the secrets of the universe around the, you guessed it, Outer Wilds. With that expedition comes the most important aspect of the game, exploration. Now, when I say this game's story is non-linear, I mean it's basically like you have a book cover, but when you open it, there's just one page with a drawing of a middle finger and a text saying, find it yourself. So the mission? Explore every inch of every planet to piece together multiple mysteries that are all interconnected. However, on my first playthrough, I skipped reading most of the ship logs and translated messages, so naturally I was completely lost. But I wasn't about to make the same mistake on my second playthrough. So I made sure to read every single log and piece of dialogue I could. And out I went to explore my first planet, Giants Deep. I wonder what we'll find here. What is that? What is, I, I ran into Statue Island. I was trying to find Statue Island. Statue Island found- Whoa! Well, that's unfortunate. But it's all good, because I have unlimited redos thanks to this goat statue. It basically put me in a time loop where I have to relive the same day over and over again. So I just wake back up, get onto the ship, and maybe find a different planet. Let's try Ember Twin. Alright, now that I've landed, I can finally forget get my soup. Well, you know, mistakes happen, but it's important that you learn from them and don't let them happen again. What? Repair it. Ow. Okay, well, I didn't... Oh, are you? Occasional hiccups aside, after reading many translated texts from the Nomai, a species that Hearthians deemed to be ancient, I start to piece together what's going on. The Nomai were building something in order to find the Eye. What exactly did they build, and what is the Eye? Well, I would answer that question, but I feel like you need to experience this game for yourself in order to fully appreciate it. Even if that means having runs where you learn absolutely nothing and waste hours of your time. But it's all part of the process. 
Although, I did have a lot of fun piecing together the mystery behind the quantum shards. Basically, there are these glowing purple chunks that look like space rocks, and that's because they are. I won't go too in-depth about where they came from or where to find more info about them, but I will say that learning about quantum mechanics through these areas was challenging, yet culminated in a pretty cool reveal. Speaking of reveals, when exploring, you learn that each planet has unique qualities that present you with different obstacles. Giant's Deep has the clockwise spinning twisters that launch you into space, and right back down. Oh. <laughs> Both Ash Twin and Ember Twin are twinning with their prickly cactus farms. Oh my gosh, I'm a pro right now, I'm a- No! Brittle Hollow was playing super hot dodgeball with the black hole. Oh, oh okay. Huh? And the interloper has ghosts that think they matter a bit too much. You know what? I'm gonna go. Uh, oh, I just died. Oh, okay. Then you have Dark Bramble, which is more foggy than dark. But as you can see, there are some bright lights right over there. Though it turns out Mother Nature is quite the big beauty, isn't she? To me though, the biggest obstacle here is time itself. Since you only have 22 minute intervals to find whatever you can before the sun explodes, oh yeah, forgot to mention, the sun explodes, your timing has to be pretty on point. For example, Ash Twin's sand is constantly pouring into Ember Twin's core, slowly filling it from the ground up, meaning if you want to explore the underground areas, you have to work fast. And on Brittle Hollow, I can't tell you how many times I had to wait to get into the Tower of Quantum Knowledge only for that little tune to start playing, signaling my timely demise. Stop playing that music! It would also be extremely demotivating whenever the there's more to explore here tag would still be on the ship logs after searching in that specific area the whole run. Then again, when I did find what I needed, it was super satisfying. I found it! Still, I wish the game had a little tablet or some interface you could tap into just so the player doesn't have to remember everything. Although I do like that you can ask the other astronaut characters for directions if you don't really know where else to go. Speaking of which, I love how cozy each of their little campfire setups are. That and the various instruments they all play add so much to the game's atmosphere. Every single sound feels distinct, with some giving a sense of dread and danger, while others a feeling of warmth and comfort. To give an example of the former, let me put you in a scene. The violent crashing of meteors on Brittle Hollow as the planet crumbles around you. The deep humming of the black hole as it teleports you to an unknown location. Also notice the subtle difference between the muffled jetpack thruster and your deep breaths echoing inside your suit. As for the latter, there's no better sound effect to convey that relief than when you reach an area with trees where you fill up that sweet, sweet oxygen. And even though the songs playing on the Ventures frequency have a country bumpkin vibe like you're about to meet a family who's a bit too close, it still fits as a wandering around the space sticks kind of vibe. Additionally, since we are in space, there are definite sci-fi elements that get accentuated by the Nomai technology, like the glowing balls locking into place to open things. I've also got to give massive props to the design of the whole solar system in general. I was so absorbed into searching for anything I could find floating in space. Is that a satellite? What is that? What is that? It's a satellite. Oh, <laughs> that was my map! Even the interloper, which is basically a mysterious comet, adds to how large and grand the galaxy actually is. Speaking of grand, I know I said I wouldn't talk about spoilers, but I just have to talk about the ending, since I'm sure those who have already played the game want to know my thoughts. So massive spoiler warning until this timestamp here. Alright, spoiler warning over. Figuring out how to get to the Ash Twin project was a pretty frustrating process to say the least. I did make it to the vessel before getting to Ash Twin's core, so I was royally confused on what to do. But I definitely didn't have to look it up and find that the Twin Towers were supposed to represent the Twin Planets, and at no point did I spend an hour trying to get the timing right on the warp only to realize I could just use my scout to know when to go, and I certainly didn't get the bad ending by removing the core and forgetting to wait for the warp, resulting in my permadeath. <coughs> Small blunders aside, I did eventually make it back to the vessel and found myself at the eye of the universe. To be honest, when I got there, I was ready to be done with this game. Not that I didn't enjoy the journey, it was just by that point my energy was so drained. But then I got to the true ending. Huh? I knew going into the game that the ending made some people emotional. What I didn't know was that all the homies would get together for one last tune before the entire universe collapses. The way the environment changes to familiar surroundings, 
and how you retrieve the instruments, calling back to previous puzzles, it brings everything full circle. The ethereal nature of it all honestly left me more speechless than emotional. Especially after all those hours of trying to get more knowledge on why the sun is exploding, only for none of it to matter anyway. I don't like getting existential, but this game definitely left me feeling kind of empty by the end. Like, what was it all for? And I think that was by design. So after finishing Outer Wilds, I can officially say it's pretty damn good. Is it one of the best indie games I've played? Not really, but it is one of the most unique. I'm usually not so great at puzzles in games, but there's something so rewarding about piecing together the mysteries while also finding new information that will all lead you closer to the truth. It also presents nature as a beautiful yet dangerous thrill ride that we're all passengers on. Despite the many frustrating mechanics and non-linear storytelling that may stray some players away, I think the ups and downs are what make it a truly memorable experience. So to those who have a game they couldn't get into, but feel like they were missing something, give it another chance. Because who knows, you might end up liking it. Thanks for watching. Wait, there's a DLC.